What's up? My name is Lex. My name is Jeremiah. And even though you and I waited till marriage, there were still things that that I wasn't sure about. I think to myself, how could I ever, ever think you're mine when you are his? But at some point in high school, I started smoking a lot of weed and then it led to opiates um, in a head all. Today we wanted to have a kind of a candid conversation about something that has really deeply impacted our life. Yeah. So today we're going to talk about purity. It is a, um, is a topic that the church has talked about for a really long time. It's a topic that is sometimes um, talked about in, in the wrong way. Yeah. And, and it can create a really damaging view on sex, a really damaging view on relationships and marriage and singleness. And um, if you're someone that's been damaged or uh, negatively affected by a religious view on purity, I just, I just want to talk about a different option. Yeah, I feel like there's, there's two ends of the spectrum with purity that are both so negative. Mm -hmm. And I know that what you want to share, there's the, there's this beautiful middle ground mm -hmm. um, that we've learned a lot about. And I know you have a lot you want to say about it. Yeah. Yeah, I heard this. Um, I heard a, um, a story of, of a preacher who, who shared a, a really, really damaging metaphor on purity. And... Um, and then a preacher who responded to it. And the metaphor was basically that uh, he had a rose and he said, look how beautiful and perfect and lovely this rose is. And then he asked everyone to pass it around the church. And so everyone took the rose and passed it around, I don't know, a thousand people. And it came back to him and then it was kind of damaged and whittling away. And he said, now who would want this? And and I'm afraid that that's some of our connotation when we hear the word purity. I feel like sometimes we hear it and it it triggers us a little bit. Um, and the preacher that responded to that, he said, Christ looks at, at, at that rose and says, I want that. And so that's kind of where I want to start today. Um, you know, my, my view on purity is not about, Craig Rochelle says, um, it's not about behavior modification, but it's about heart modification. And so my my view on purity, I want to start I your there. Mom said that. <laughs> my mom likes to quote Greg Rochelle a lot. Um, it's because he's good and really smart. Yeah. Um, I want to start there. That purity is not about um, your virginity not about your actions it's not about your behavior it's not about what you need to do what rules you need to follow but it's about your relationship to Christ wow. and I think that when we start there we could have a really really healthy beautiful view on what he wants for us what he desires for us and how we can walk forward in that and so my definition of purity is less about what we do and more about the posture of our heart. I have grown up in the church my whole life. I think that the first time I heard the word purity, I was in sixth or seventh grade. And um, I had gone with my mom to a, a Christian, like, like a store, gift store, bookstore thing. And it had, they had um, purity rings, which were super popular at the time. I, I don't know if they still are, but. I'm sure there's. I'm sure probably they still are, but they were very popular. And, um, and so I think I was 13 and we picked out a ring and it said, true love waits. And what you're supposed to do is wear it 
on your wedding finger until you get married and then on when you get married you're supposed to give it to your husband and he wears it as a necklace but I ended up losing my ring and yeah. couldn't give it to you <laughs> <laughs> and so uh and so that's kind of where my introduction to purity was and I think that um a lot of my you know adolescent years were built on probably more of that behavior being uh, thinking to myself I I can't do that because I I'm not allowed I can't do that because um God will be mad at me I can't do that because my parents will be mad at me I have a, a little bit of a unique story my my parents had me in high school and so there was a little bit of an added layer of that mm -hmm. an added pressure of you know you know what happened to mom and dad you don't want to end up the same way like they expect so much more of you and that really wasn't an expectation coming from them it was more of an expectation I put on myself um because I think that I I just had I was looking at it in the wrong way yeah. it's coming at it from the wrong perspective um but ultimately it was something that was a priority to me it was something that was really important to me even if it wasn't important for the right reason. Um, it was something that I talked about on first dates. It was something that was um, always a topic of conversation with anybody that I dated. Um, some people that I dated ended up not wanting to be with me anymore because of it. Some people liked it, some people didn't. Um, and ultimately, I'm very grateful and happy to say that I was able to wait till marriage. Um, but I think that my view on purity changed a lot when we met. Mm -hmm. And so do you want to kind of share your story leading up to us meeting? Yeah, so I, I grew up and I didn't really know much about purity at all. I was not uh, taught the value of waiting. Um, I've talked before about my addiction and um, I grew up in a big family and I kind of learned all everything I knew from just watching my older siblings watching them have relationships um, not necessarily drugs but I was addicted to a lot of different things um, I don't think that um, this audience has probably heard a lot of your addiction if you want to kind of share just short 30 second yeah so um, I, some point in high school, which the purity thing was way before that, but at some point in high school, I started uh, smoking a lot of weed, and then it led to opiates, um, and it had all these things wrapped around, and it all has to do with purity. It all has to yeah. do with my heart and my soul, and I was just like trapped in this, um, addicted to looking at things on my phone. I was in unhealthy relationships. I was addicted to opiates and all this stuff carried with me for such a long time. And I, and I struggled with it for a very long time. Yeah. And there's a statistic that says 95% of people do not wait till marriage. Yeah. And um, I, now that you say that, I want to say that neither of us expect anyone in this audience to be someone that is waited or... Um, I, I don't ever want this conversation to come across as um, something that causes shame or something that feels like, well, I didn't wait, so now I, I ruined it. I messed it up. Yeah. Um, that's not at all the way that I view purity. It's not at all the way that um, we want to come across in this conversation. Um, I expect most of the audience to be in that 95% and... Um, and I, I don't want it to be a... Yeah, so back to mine, I am in the 95%. <laughs> I did not wait till marriage. Um, and I struggled with, in my relationships, with purity and in, in a lot of different ways. And when I started, when I finally got sober, I started to realize that God was, like, calling me to something better. And not just 
my relationships, not just with the addictions, but he was, he wanted me to have a pure heart. Um, mm. So before I even met you, I wanted my next relationship to be pure, as, as pure as it could be. So mm. I wanted to wait with this next person. I didn't want to just like get into a relationship and just have it be um, the, the way society is, place. you know. Yeah. I wanted to wait in some way and then that's when I met Lex and found out that she was waiting till marriage so it felt really just, early too yeah we talked about it like within I don't know, the first week after our like yeah right after our first date um and I think that um so now both these stories lead to us meeting and I think that the beautiful thing about our dating story is that it was different than obviously anything that you had been in, but it was also different than anything I had been in. Yeah. I had always, the topic had always been, how do we stay away from each other physically? Instead of saying, how are we growing toward Christ individually and together? And I think that when you make that distinction, um, purity becomes something that isn't just about sex and lust and physical things, but it's about how am I staying connected to the vine so that Christ's desires for my life become my desires for my life. I think that um, God never gives us a command that's intended to hurt us. And he only gives us commands that are intended to protect us and also intended to help us live our best life yeah. and the best version of our life. And so I wanna, I wanna say that if you've walked differently in your past, you haven't messed up your purity. If you've, if you've lived in a way, I mean, both you and I, it looks different, but we, we, our past wasn't pure. No, th and that's what I was saying. Like, I feel like we're both so far on the opposite spectrum of purity. Yeah. But neither of us were necessarily we in this, be. this beautiful spot that God talks about. Yeah. Where we needed to be. And so when we started dating, we really, really prioritized. We want Christ to be at the center of our marriage. And because we want Christ to be at the center of our marriage, we need Christ to be at the center of our relationship right now. It's not just going to magically come in marriage. It's not just going to be like, oh, we're, we're in covenant now, so now Christ is automatically at the center. Like, it's, it's something that you have to choose. It's something that you have to prioritize because it can get distorted really quickly. And, and so we prayed together every single night before you left Mm -hmm. um, to go home we bought books we did journaling we had we had a goal because what we had was special and beautiful and obviously God's plan but when that happens the unholy one really really wants to attack that and so I think that what we did, I'm not even sure if we were conscious of it, but what we were doing was putting up a plan and an action to prepare for attacks before they happen. And I think that's why we were able to remain pure because we didn't make it about the behavior and we made it about connecting to the vine yeah. what's our relationship like with christ who is he calling us to be individually and who is he calling us to be as a couple and when our focus was on that our actions reflected that and so we wanted to honor him in what we did we wanted to honor him with our bodies we wanted to honor him with our relationship and um i think that ultimately that is the true definition of purity and I wanted to also talk about, um, we talk about purity mainly in singleness and dating, like wait before marriage, 
uh, wait, I'm sorry, wait till marriage. Um, but in my opinion, I think that purity is just as important, if not more important, inside of marriage. Yeah, for sure. Uh, because in singleness, it's between you and God. And in marriage, it's between you and God and you and your partner. And it can do a lot of damage. And yeah, I know for me, um, outside of marriage, there was a lot of damage between the physical the emotional, the spiritual bond because I wasn't pure. And I and I had other relationships before I met you. Mm -hmm. And there were things that I carried, you know, through those relationships. And even though you and I waited till marriage, there were still things that that I wasn't pure about. And I carried it with me into our marriage. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, I kind of cut you off. What were you saying? No, I just wanted to say that I think that you are such a beautiful example of what chasing purity inside of marriage looks like. And I just wanted you to share with, if there's any guys listening, I just think that they can learn a lot from the decisions that you've made in the relationship that you have with Christ. So I wanted you to share kind of your boundaries you set. Yeah, so I, I struggled with um, looking at stuff on my phone for a long time, even since I was... I don't know, 11 years old with magazines or whatever. And then once the cell phone came out, you can just look up any, anything you wanted. I struggled with that through all my relationships and that I thought that when I got married, that was going to go away and it did mm -hmm. not. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I think that's a lie that probably a lot of men believe. Yeah. It's like marriage will fix this. Marriage. Especially that, men that are trying to remain pure yeah. because you're, you're abstaining from that physical side. And so, like, once I have that, this will go away. No, it doesn't fix any problems that right. you have. Anything that you have going into a marriage, you are just going to carry that right in, and then it's going to end up getting worse. Yeah. Um, and I and I struggle with it, and I wanted to I wanted to fix it, so I had. I finally broke down, and I had Lex set a bunch of boundaries on my phone. She set a bunch of restrictions, so I it wasn't even possible for me to look anything up anymore because I wanted it out of my life, and I didn't even want to be able to... Um, Access. Yeah, if I deleted an app, I can just download it and go back on it, but I didn't even want that option. So I had her set restrictions on my phone so I couldn't look at anything anymore. And it helped me so much. I and think I, that you're... Your example is when you're, this is probably one of the hardest things that people, probably especially men, struggle with. And, I mean, what, what you've shown me is, like, run from it. Yeah. Like, sprint the other way. It, there's nothing that's going to stop you from doing it besides seeing what's in front of you and saying, I'm running as fast as I can the other way. Yeah. It's Craig Groeschel has a great sermon on this where he talks about moving the line. Mm -hmm. And if like my boundary line's right here, people like to go right up to the line as close as they can before they cross it. And instead of getting that close to the line, what I did is just, I just made a new line back here. So yeah. I couldn't even get to that line. And I, I like to use that reference with, yeah. with that whole thing. Yeah, I think that um, there is a, there's such a cool thing about for me being married to you and, and watching all of this happen where I saw when it became instead of it being about something that you don't want to do to hurt me it became this is the man that God is calling me to be and I think that it made all the difference in your life Yeah. that it wasn't it was no longer about me and you it was about you and God yeah and I think that is probably a, a pattern in your life that the only time you ended up actually living a life that honored mm -hmm. him is when you were seeking him the most. Mm -hmm. Not when you were doing it for anybody else, but you and him. Right. And I think that um, I kind of want to end this talk on purity is 
something that we should be um, longing for. No matter if we're single, we're dating, we're engaged, we're married, divorced, widowed, wherever you're at. Um, and it's, it's so much more than uh, sex. I think that too often we make it about only that. But in my opinion, uh, purity is a purity of all things in our mind. Purity from, um, I, the, the, I looked up the definition online and it said that the definition of purity is um, freedom from immorality. And so that can be sexual, that can be uh, judgment, that can be bitterness, that can be resentment, that can be gossip, that can be hatred, that could be anything ugly in our heart that we don't want in there. Mm -hmm. And I think that, I know that there's nothing that we can do to be perfectly pure. There's no amount of work that we can do. There's no amount of um, books that we can read or things that we can remove from our life that will make us perfectly pure. The only thing that makes us perfectly pure is the blood of Christ. Right. He died for all of it. And we want to remain pure because he purified us. Yeah. And that our decision should be a response to what he already did it's not a rule it's not s something that you you must live by it's not um a requirement of faith that you gotta wait till you are married to have sex and you, and you must remain pure and you must flee from all sexual temptation it's not this this kind of uncomfortable requirement that we're so often taught yeah it doesn't matter what what happened in your past like god has already forgiven all that through jesus christ wiped it all clean it doesn't matter if you have been unpure in however many ways your entire life yeah if you want to change the way you live your life now today you can change the way yeah. you view pur purity you can change whether you're in a marriage or you're thinking about being married, right. you can set yourself up for your future wife, your future husband, yeah. your future spouse. Or you can fix your marriage that you're in right now or your relationship you're in right now. Or just yourself as a single person. I think that purity is not a requirement of faith. It's a response to the beautiful, wonderful amazing sacrifice that Christ made on the cross. And I want to share with you a verse in Isaiah. It says, Though your sins are like scarlet, I will make them white as snow. And I was, um, I was listening to a podcast by uh, Sadie Robertson, who's just such an amazing uh, speaker, just a, a true woman of God. I I really respect her and look up, look up to her. She's just a voice of a generation. She's awesome. And she was talking about purity and she was talking about her relationship with her husband. And she said that um, they both came from an impure past when they met each other, but they were seeking purity together. And um, when she got married, she started feeling insecurity and resentment and bitterness for her husband's past before her. And she started thinking, he was supposed to be mine. He's my husband, he's my guy. How could he have this relationships with these other women before me? He's mine. I think you felt that towards me some. Very some much point. so. <laughs> I, I'm telling this story because I, I feel this way. And he's mine. How could this... The thought of it, um, I think in, in a way, made her kind of punish him for it. And she felt so convicted by the Holy Spirit when she realized that 
he's not hers, he's God's. And I think that when I see you as God's, this, this verse in Isaiah is the way that I start to see you. That you are no longer scarlet in my eyes, that you are as white as snow. Because Christ died for all of that. Everything in your past, everything that you, you wish you could have changed, you wish you could have done differently, all of those things is what he carried that cross to Calvary that day for. And when I see you that way, I feel so convicted and think to myself, how could I ever, ever think you're mine when you are his? And so I just, I want to end with that. Whether it's the way you view yourself, the way you view your spouse, you are made white as snow through him, through the sacrifice that he made. He cleared all of it. And so if today you feel like you want to make some changes, talk to him about it. See how he may lead you in transformation. See how he may lead you in a new life. See the beautiful, beautiful future that he has for you. Um, because I promise that it's good and it's wonderful and it's lovely. And... Um, Sex is his good design, and it's meant to be beautiful. It's, I think it's one of his, God's first commandments, yeah. is be fruitful and multiply yeah. to Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm. it's, it's meant for good. Um, and so I encourage you in your walk with, uh, with Christ. I encourage you in your walk with purity. And I, uh, I hope we can continue this conversation in the future. So... Leave a comment if you uh, have questions for us or if, um, if you feel encouraged by this message. I, I ask that you share it with someone that you think would also feel encouraged by it. I hope God blesses you in all that you do.